Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 5th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Google released details regarding an interesting copy on write vulnerability in Mac OS. This vulnerability could be used to overwrite files and essentially gets you privilege escalation. Google notified Apple of the vulnerability and released these details 90 days after Apple received a notice. There is a proof of concept exploit that Google did publish as part of these details. Not really much that you can do about this at this point other than wait for Apple to release a patch. And we have a new update for Windows Exploit Suggester. This is a tool that many penetration testers may remember, but it stopped working about two years ago because Microsoft switched from the bulletin based vulnerability system to the new XML API and no longer published bulletin. So with that, essentially the parser that Windows Exploit Suggester used in order to learn about new vulnerabilities broke. Well, uh, this latest update fixes this problem. It now uses the Microsoft XML API to retrieve vulnerability data. But well, there are a lot of tools out there that will tell you what you haven't patched on your system. What really makes Windows Exploit Suggester different is that it will actually tell you if any of these vulnerabilities are exploitable and then it will suggest, as the name implies, exploits to use against these vulnerabilities. This is of course really important if you're trying to prioritize what to patch and if you're really sort of trying to determine what risk you're exposing yourself to. And of course it makes life easier for penetration testers if they don't already have a tool like this that will match up vulnerabilities to exploits. And then there are more reports of the recent Docker run C vulnerability being exploited to install cryptocurrency miners. The latest uh, version of this discovery comes from Imperva, from Vitaly Simonovich and Ori Nakar. They also took a closer look at the Shodan data that lists exposed Docker instances. Now, the tricky part here is that it listens on port 2375, which shouldn't really be used by anything else. But uh, Imperva actually found that a number of the hosts that are listening on this port are not exposing Docker, but various other services, like interestingly, MySQL, Apache, Tomcat, and others. They found about 400 IPs that they were actually able to connect to and where they got the Docker response back. Out of these exposed system, it appeared that most of them have already been infected and were running cryptocurrency miners. This blog post also nicely shows how an attacker would take advantage of an exposed Docker host and how you would, for example, use that to read data, expose credentials, or even scan internal networks and do various other things that an attacker may be interested in. And Norway and Finland have suggested for a while now that Russia is jamming GPS and as a result also affecting some civilian air traffic in Finland and Norway. To support this assertion, Norway has now released some more data to show what kind of jamming they have observed and when they have observed it. Of course, this is a problem with more and more systems relying relying on GPS. Now, as far as network security goes, the positioning is usually not a huge issue, but one place where GPS receivers do play quite a role is in timekeeping. And messing with timekeeping, of course, can change logs or make some network security features fail. There's, of course, no great way to protect yourself because you're kind of using GPS as the standard here. 
you could use additional time sources like uh, maybe a cell phone signal or other signals like this or just monitor any unusual differences in the time delivered by GPS and the time on your system. If you have to make some unusually large corrections, then you probably should have an alert set up. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be also traveling to RSA. If you are attending RSA, we'll have our panel again on Thursday. So watch out for Alan, Heather, Ed and myself. And if you run into me, I typically do carry some Storm Center stickers with me. I will not be handing them out at the panel because it's on the large keynote stage, which really doesn't lend itself uh, to do that. But uh, if you catch me somewhere else at the conference and also drop some at the Sands booth at RSA. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.